let's take a look at how to make the ballerina tulle skirt or you can use the pattern to make a small tutu. So if you download your PDF, we'll just have a look at uh, Simiko here in a longer version. So I'll just move her to the side. You'll see on the PDF that you have the skirt waistband section, so that needs to be cut out and the pattern piece needs to be cut on a fold in fabric. You have the underskirt fab that section, pattern section, section one, and the underskirt section two. They need to be joined. Have a look underneath. We have the netting section, piece one and two, and again, they need to be joined. So I've gone ahead and done all that. So there's my waistband section and I've gone ahead and cut that out in just a plain cotton fabric and that is on the fold so that's a whole piece. My ballerina skirt here has been cut in, I've just used a nice shimmery voile fabric so a kind of cotton lawn but with a bit of a shimmer and instead of making the very short version this pattern will is fine for small dolls or large larger taller dolls and I've just lengthened the pattern so you can lengthen I doubt you'd need to shorten it but you can lengthen or shorten here so I've just added on the quantity that I need below and that's my skirt section I've also lengthened the netting section, again I've joined the pattern pieces and I've lengthened the netting section by the same amount that I lengthened the skirt section. I've gone and cut that on a fold, there's my fold line, but because my net was wider I just decided to leave the extra, it'll just be a fuller underskirt. These are just rectangles so you can adjust them as you see fit. So the first thing I'm going to do is go over to the machine and I'm going to run a large stitch just about, just within a centimetre, six mil, in from the edge, as large a stitch as my machine can make along the edge here. And the tension of the machine should gather it slightly just on its own. And I'm going to go to the machine and do exactly the same thing along the top of the the waistband here. I said before that I was going to run a gathering stitch along the top here but actually I don't need it because I haven't cut the underskirt or the kind of lining section any wider than the pattern piece so if you're cutting it as the pattern piece then you can just leave it as it is. If you decide you want, to want a fuller skirt and you want more fabric in there then you will need to gather it in. But I have had to gather in my netting. So you can see I've got my edges here. I've just missed a tiny bit of the edge here because my machine has an automatic cutter. So my ends of thread when I start are very, very um, short so I don't have a lot to gather in. But that's not, no problem because I can gather it by hand. And I do want these last couple of centimetres here or last inch to be flat. So I need that to gather back to the waist of the skirt. So I'm just going to gather that in. So take your fabric clips and clip the edge of the net to the edge of the fabric. So you want the edges to match perfectly. I'm just going to go over here and just clip to there because I want that to match. And then I can use my longer threads here to just pull this in.
and clip these. Clip it all the way along. It looks a little bit fiddly now. It's actually easier when you get it to the machine because when you get it to the machine, you can compress it and push the edges together and stitch. Just make the gathers as even as you can if you just need to pinch some sections and you can. So I'm going to take this to the machine and I'm going to secure the two waists together. So stitch all the way along, taking just within a centimetre seam allowance so that they're attached at the waist. As you can see here, I've attached the netting to the underskirt waistband and just edge to edge there. I've also, while I was over at the machine, just, hand, uh, just stitched up the um, the hem. So I, I use my overlocker and stitched it up. If you don't have an overlocker, it's not an issue. You can either do a very narrow double hem and stitch that up to secure it. I've taken the waistband and if you see here on your pattern piece, you've got fold line leave open so you can get a couple of perforated lines. I've gone ahead and I've pressed in and in like that and the same here I've pressed in and in and I've also pressed the waistband in half so I'm going to go over to the machine and just secure those down so stitch from there to there and there to there so hopefully you can see my stitches just to hold that down so now the waistband can be folded in half and I'm going to put the edge of the waistband to just within a centimetre here or I can just, I'm going to eventually turn that back and, and hem that when I close up the back. So I just want to come just within a centimetre or so within and I'm going to attach this waistband to the two layers at the waist. So I'll just use my clips You might have to just pull a little bit. I've got ended up with a little bit too much here, kind of gathered in too much. a good idea to just check this measurement before it started because as you can see I've got too much there so I'm just going to have to redo this folded edge and just take a little bit extra off there for now I'm just going to fold that in just to show you and I'll fix that so we need to stitch the waistband to the waist allowing for a little bit of seam allowance each side so that we can sew up the center back so as you can see I've attached the waistband to the skirt and net if I just turn that over you can see that I've neatened the edge it's not essential but if you have an overlocker then you can neaten it so I'll just turn that over and just to show you that because this is a very narrow waistband in fact I have made it quite narrow um, you can widen it if you haven't got the correct uh, tools to pass the um, either the elastic or the ribbon through this type of tool is often quite useful but that's the smallest one I've got so I decided to use a darning needle and I'm, I popped my 
ribbon through there and if you're using elastic you can pop it through I'm going to have to be very careful now not to catch the fabric as I go through and just pass it through this narrow channel and these are the challenges we face when we're making these tiny garments so I'm through there So the only thing I need to do now is to pop the centre back seams together so make sure that the net and the fabric are together there and the net and the fabric are together here and I'm going to just clip them together so just get the ribbon out of the way for now. And I'm going to stitch up the back seam. It's not so essential that the net is perfectly matched, but it is essential that the fabric is perfectly matched. So just make sure that you've got them together and that you're capturing all four layers in the back seam. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch up this back seam. So you can see I've stitched up the back seam. You just need to sniff off any loose threads. Just make sure it's nice and neat. I'm going to turn this through. Just make sure I don't lose my ribbon. And if we have a slight mismatch, which I do have at the back, I'm just going to gently trim that net. So let's try our net skirt on Sumika. need to lift her corset up so that we can get to her waist. Just gather and tie the ribbon. And pull the corset back down. So there we have Sumiko's netted skirt. I just want to show you something really beautiful that you can do as well. Because I've made this one earlier, I can show you. If you pop satin, I didn't have any satin bias, but satin bias binding is really good for this job. I just had some plain cotton bias binding but placing bias binding on the edge of the net before you attach it is a really really good idea and it's really pretty so that might be something that you'd like to do as well and it's simply a case of just popping it on the edge of the net before you stitch up the centre back. I couldn't resist going ahead and adding the bias tape for the bias binding to the hem. This is cotton bias and quite stiff so just note that if you use satin bias it would be a lot softer and uh, it would drape more but I just wanted you to see the effect and how beautiful it is. So if we just turn around and you can see how that looks and I have a handy 
blog on my or a handy post on my um, Wabi Sabi Studio that uh, shows you how to make your own bias binding and gives you the templates and shows you how to sew it on. <laughs>